Hello everyone. Welcome to SFDC Chronicle. Today we will be discussing GraphQL. This is another video in our GraphQL series. So let's dive in. Today we are going to see how we can integrate Postman with GraphQL. I will give you an detailed steps how to integrate Postman and GraphQL. Similarly, how you can connect AllShare with GraphQL API of Salesforce. Also, in this particular video, we are going to show you how to do create, update and delete a particular record from graph using GraphQL API. So that is nothing but the mutation which is in beta version currently in Salesforce. And last but not the least, how we can use GraphQL API from LWC. So in LWC, we do not need to call any Apex class to do the query and filtering out anything. We are going to demonstrate to you with an small application that how you can use GraphQL in LWC. So let's get started then. So first I will open po uh, Salesforce. So this is my Salesforce org and I have installed ebikes that is uh, available in uh, from Trailhead. So I've installed this particular package in this org and I, I'm going to use this one for my demo purpose. Before going to that one, I have created a connected app that is GraphQL API connected app. In this app, so uh, I, you will get an consumer key and secret. How you can create and connected app? You can type app in the quick find box and uh, once you get the app, you can select the app. So yes, this one app manager and uh, you need to click on new. New connected app, not the lightning one, new connected app. And then you can select this one, create a connected app and click on continue. And then you need to fill this details. So if I click on edit. So this is the details I have provided. This is the callback URL. I have used enable OAuth setting as checked. And then I have provided the URL callback URL and also the scopes that the scope that is required. So once I selected all the setting correctly, then I will navigate to my postman. So in this postman, what I need to do, I need to click on authorize and in authorize section, you will get, you need to select OAuth 2.0. There will be many option. You need to select OAuth 2.0. Now, once you select OAuth 2.0, you will get a screen like this where you need to type in the auth URL. So this is the auth URL that will be your one minute. Let me show you. So you you know what is your domain URL. So if you go to your domain. OK. Hmm. So from here you will get your domain URL. What whatever is your domain URL so that you can copy and here what you need to do in the auth URL once you provide your domain URL let me show you that one so okay 
okay so that is matching with current my domain url you need to copy this one and you need to paste it here with https appended and after that you need to append slash services and slash oauth to authorize same for access token you need to provide https then your domain url and then services oauth to slash token now client id and client secret once you create your uh, app manage uh, connected app then you will get a button like this and if you click on manage consumer details you will get your consumer key and consumer secret so once you get your consumer uh, key and consumer secret you can put it on this two uh, boxes and then you can click on get new access token so once you click on get new access token it uh, as i have already authenticated it so that's why i'm getting that one otherwise it will allow uh, you authentication box will come and there you will get two option called allow and deny and then you need to click on allow and then you will redirect to this particular page so here i got my access token so this is the main thing to connect with the graphql api so once i get this uh, access token in in my postman then i can go to this uh, graphql query section so from where i can go to this graphql query section in postman you need to click on this uh, menu and then file and then new okay and if you click on new then there will be one option called graphql so select that one and a window open like this here in the authorization sorry in the header section you need to provide the bearer token uh, like authorization equals to bearer and after that whatever whatever access token we got after we authorize we need to paste it here and then in the body in the query what i have uh, written a, uh, a graphql query how to write a graphql query what are the different types of graphql query that i have already discussed in detail in my previous video if you have not gone through that video i will provide it a link in the description section please check out that video so here I have written a simple GraphQL query and then I can check from this particular postman whether I'm getting the result or not. So let me hit the query button and then it is sending request and the status is 200. Okay, so I got my data. So this is my data. Uh, I got the data successfully. So that is how you can integrate, integrate postman with GraphQL and you can use query any query that you want to execute in GraphQL. Now that is all about postman integration with uh, GraphQL. Now let's see how to integrate Altair using uh, with our GraphQL with our Salesforce. So I have um, install the alter extension for mozilla so uh, here what you need to do this is uh, the main thing the url that is required in your postman as well so in the postman also you can see this is my domain url so this is my whole domain url and you need to append https before that and then services then data then whichever version you want to use and after that you need to append graphql same uh, same url i have used in my altair as well so uh, you need to select the post one and the same url i have used the, uh, here as well and in the here in the auth section you need to select authorization auth type as bearer token and i need to provide the access token that i have got from uh, my postman so i have put that one 
and here also I am using the same query to show you that uh, using the same access token I can able to access access it from postman as well as from Altair as well. So I'm using the same query and I will click on send request and I got the request. So the connection is working fine with Altair. So that is how the Altair one is like uh, easy. You just need to get the access token from either from postman or from any other places if you have some integration if you have some vs code or you are already using some vs code from there also you will get the access token and you can use the same access token in your alter um, app as well to get the data so once you get the data the connection is I mean the integration with Altair and Salesforce GraphQL API is established. Now you can play around like with different query you can write, uh, you can um, play around with your query in this uh, Altair uh, app and you can check whether your query is correct or not. So that is all about how to integrate Altair with Salesforce GraphQL API. Now let's come to the third part that is mutation. Mutation is how you can create a new record or edit a new record or delete a record from using GraphQL API. So I will use Altair for that one uh, and I, I will show you how to how you can use create, update and delete from Altair. So before that, let me navigate to account page. So this is my account page. So if I refresh it and if I click on all accounts, so you can see all accounts. So the new account that I'm going to create is this one that is first account by GraphQL. Let me see whether that already exists or not. So I will search here. No, it doesn't exist. But suppose I use this one. So then it is very evident that this particular account does not exist in my org. Now let's create this one using GraphQL. Okay, so I will copy this one uh, for to save the time. I just from previously also previously I just uh, created all the all the query, so it will be faster, and I will paste it here. Uh, before going to that one, let me show you one thing. So here what you, we are using query UI, then which uh, object we are querying like this. I have created the query, uh, query one. But in this case, I have used something else. So in this case, you need to use mutation. You don't need to use query because query is to fetch the data. But mutation is where you generally use for create, update and delete in GraphQL. So that's why I used this one mutation and then you can provide a meaningful name as per your wish. And then UI API and you need to use account create. This is very important. And then which in which object you are going to create that is account what will be the name you can also provided other details in this particular thing but i have not provided that one so once the record is created it will return me id and name so that is this is a simple like uh, create a dml query i have written like dml statement not query dml statement i have written to make uh, to keep it simpler so i have not added much information in this particular mutation one 
So now let me hit send request and see what happened. So I hit send request and it is showing me that a record got created with this ID. Let's check in the Salesforce. So I, re I will refresh it. And voila, this one got created. So yeah, first account by GraphQL got created. If you see the created date, it will uh, it is showing today's date only. So it got created. Now uh, that is fine. It got created. Now I want to update some field of this particular account. That is account number, type, and industry. So let me use the update query. So I will use this query. Copy it and I will paste it here. Okay. So in this particular uh, mutation uh, statement, what I am using account update demo, any meaningful name you can provide. And then you need to use account update, then whichever field from which object you want to, uh, for which object you want to update this one, that is account. What are the fields that you are going to update? That is account number, type and prospect. And the mandatory is ID because for update, update you need a ID field. So uh, let me change the ID because uh, this must be changed. So yes. Okay, let's see what happened. If we don't uh, change the ID, then I will put the correct ID and show you what is happening. Okay, so let me hit send request. And it is giving me a message called entity is deleted. So using that particular ID which I have provided, this uh, API doesn't found any account with this particular ID. So it is giving me an error message called entity is deleted. Okay, now let me provide the correct one, correct ID. And let me again click on send request. Okay, now I got the success is equals to true. Now let me navigate to Salesforce and refresh it and let's check whether it is updated or not. Yeah, it got updated. See the account number previously it was blank and now account number type and industry that I have provided as energy prospect and 8569. So everything 8569 prospect energy got updated. So our mutation for update is working perfectly fine. Now let's delete this one. Let's see whether the delete is working fine or not. So let me paste it here and I will change the ID. Okay. Uh, so I have just provided account delete what it is going to do it is going to delete an account So that's why account delete and then I provided the ID which account I need to delete and I will click on send request So it is providing me a message that this account got deleted. There is no error So ideally this account should delete it. So let me refresh it and check that one so I have refreshed the page and I got the message that looks like there is some problem. So the account has already been deleted. So that's why it is not able to find the account. So that's why Salesforce is giving me this error message. So that is how your mutation work. You can like able to create, edit, delete from GraphQL API. Now let's move into the next part that is how to integrate your LWC component or how to access GraphQL API using LWC component. So for that one, I have created a small app that is called GraphQL demo. So let me refresh this page. Okay, it got refresh. So 
if you see um, there are 16 so in this particular uh, app what I am going to show you how we can query using GraphQL API how pagination work in GraphQL API and then uh, like how you can refresh uh, and fetch different data like uh, a related data uh, in a single query in using GraphQL query so that is all I am going to show you so in this particular section if you see there are 16 total item and uh, this is like there is two page and this is the first page and we are showing 10 uh, 10 records in this first page that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then if we click on this one then it will show another six record so that is how the pagination work I'm going to show you the code in detail bear with me first let me show you what is the functionality that I have used in this particular page so you can this is the second page and we are able to see the different the rest six product now let me uh, filter it out so here we are able to see 16 so let me uh, only uh, see volt okay so yeah so I have typed in volt it is only showing me 4 now so that's why your search is working perfectly fine and let me remove it it is working now let me select Electra so yeah it is working fine and if I click on this one and I got the again the all the record so let me navigate to product and show you that there is 16 product all to in all total present in my org so there are 16 product present in my org so all 16 product is visible in this page now let's move to coding part how I have used LWC component and GraphQL in this particular page okay for that one Okay, so this is the uh, GraphQL demo that I have used in in this particular page. Uh, GraphQL demo. So yeah, so here what we are doing. Uh, this is the uh, product detail page that I have not showed you yet. I will come to this one later, and this is the main. Uh, where I have used and search box and showing all the details okay so this is the you can see this is a lightning input where we are using search and then handle key search this is the LWC where we are showing all the products data that is available and this is the handle previous this is handle next and we are showing total count current page number and total pages and also all the product that is with the images that is visible in this particular page is visible via this another LWC component that is record tile so if I navigate to record tile it is a simple one uh, in this one we just we are passing the record and then from the record we are using the picture we are using the name the frame color and the motor that is showing here and also msrp what is the amount so that is all regarding this particular tile now let's jump into the js part okay so this is my graphql query so if you see 
this is the main thing that you need to use. You need to import Lightning UI GraphQL API. So this you need to import and then you need to write an wire message. Uh, sorry, wire method. So wire method should be like GraphQL and then you need to maintain this query colon GraphQL. You will get this uh, the format of this in Salesforce documentation as well. You can refer that documentation and then with whatever query you want to use that query you can first build in your Altair in this particular uh, app and then you can use the same query because to debug the query itself in the LWC uh, that is like that also you can do but uh, from uh, my recommendation would be you should use Altair to, to create your query and then use that query on this particular LWC component. So here what we are uh, providing as an input, we are providing this after and product name and page. What is this after? This is after is nothing but to get the pagination thing. And how you can use, uh, what are the different components, like what are the different uh, uh, like parameter of pagination, how you can write a query for a pagination that I have already shown you in my previous video. You can refer to that one or in this particular one as well, we are using this one. So this is my, uh, this I am using for my pagination. This is the product name when I'm searching with a particular product, which product I, I am searching with. So for that one, I use this particular product name and then the product uh, page size also. I am like uh, to go to navigate to the first page, I am using page size. Then I am querying the product uh, object and in the where clause, the name should be, uh, the name is like product name, whatever product name we are typing in our input search box. And then for the pagination, I am using, I am using first page and after for getting the after one and then I'm doing a order by which is like uh, order by with the name and then in return what I am uh, getting in return name what are the fields that I'm getting name battery description and whatnot whatever is required in my uh, page uh, in my LWC component that that all field I am uh, I am using in my query Another thing that I, I have used that is total count, how many record I have, what is the page result count that is in this case I have not shown in the front end but I am using it that is 10 and this is the info, info page info that you, you can use for your pagination. So for pagination you need to use has previous page, has next page and start cursor end cursor. What is the use of previous page and next page? Let me show you that one. Okay. So is last page, if there is any last page or not, it will return true and what I am doing. So when I am handle next, when I'm using handle next, it will only be visible if this is true. So that's why I have used is, used this one in is last page. Now the interesting thing is uh, when GraphQL query return the value for this one, return the value in this particular product, it is not like simple you can use product dot uh, the field name and got the field name. It's not like that. So you need to use the whole format. So in this case, if I go to my query, so product, then data, then UI API. So if I go to here, so see, UI API, then query, you need to maintain this whole thing. So UI API, then query, then what is the name of your product, then whichever you need. If you need page info, then you need to use dot page info and dot uh, has previous. If you total count is like accessible directly, so you can use total count. But if you want to use this 
particular data then you need to go through ages and node so suppose if I go to this one so here I have iterate I show all the things so what I have done I have iterate through product C dot ages and then when I want to show the data then what I have done ages then dot node dot name dot value then only you will able to show it in your uh, fr uh, wherever you want to use the value and uh, so when I am uh, how and for this variable that you are passing in this particular one that you need to use like this variable then uh, dollar sign variable for this one you need to create and get method get get variables and whatever variable you required that you can put it he here like I am using like in the product name so I have appended this one uh, before product name and after product name and I am using this particular product name in my query so when I am typing uh, the data so uh, it should in this particular thing if you say handle key change so if I go to handle key change so I am changing this product name and then this product name uh, when whenever I change it it is it will call my where method that is this one and then it will execute the query again and uh, and provide me the refresh data that is how this particular pagination and uh, to retrieve the data everything works in your LWC component now let me navigate to product details and family details so if I click on this one what it will show it will show me the all the product details and also the family details also the related list so I have clicked on this first one so the um, Dynamo X1 if I uh, navigate to Dynamo X1 so you can see the product family is dynamo and if I open this dynamo in the related list you will able to see there are four product so if I navigate to this one you will able to see there are four product so in this case you can also see four product is coming so if I go to the go into the back end this is to fetch the product family with the related list so I have query in the product family and then I use the description and category and on with this one I you to get the related record I use this one product R and whichever data is required I have just used that one ID name and all whatnot so this is how I if I go to this here so here I am showing the product details in the left hand side uh, that is the card that I have used lightning card and in in this case uh, in the right hand side what I have used I am showing the product family details and whatever related products I, I am getting that also I am showing in my page so if I go to related product I'm how I am uh, storing it in the back end let me show you so this is the related product so related product whenever I uh, select anything at that time I am I am using the GraphQL query so this is the GraphQL query that is providing me the data whenever I change the family name and then it it is providing me all products of the related list using this one so product family data UI API query then the name of the object then ages node and then this is the main thing the product R so product R will provide you all the products all the related products that present for the family product for that 
product family and then I iterate through that one and uh, this is something else this is something else this is the one that I am using in the front end related product all product dot ages now if I go here and you can see here also I need to use node name and value so you need to maintain this particular structure otherwise you will not get the proper value in your front end so that is how you can so if I click on anything else suppose if I click on Electra see it got changes the product details got changes also the product uh, family details so that is how the GraphQL like using a GraphQL query you can uh, you can fetch the related uh, record and the um, and the parent record at the same time also you can query two records that is not related at all and you can show it in your page as per your requirement so that is how the GraphQL is uh, very handy to get the uh, object at one single request from um, different object and you can use that in your page the server uh, to client and client to server route will be very less if you use GraphQL API so yes that is all regarding uh, integration with LWC component how you can access GraphQL API from LWC component hope you have uh, enjoyed this video hope you get some new ideas uh, about how you can use GraphQL API in your uh, implementation so that is all for today's session thank you for watching this video please do like share and subscribe to sfdc chronicle signing off for today thank you